This video is part one of a video series on the book King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, Rediscovering the Archetypes of the Mature Masculine. In this video I cover the Divine Child archetype and its bipolar shadow representatives in boy psychology represented in the book. The Divine Child is the primal of the immature masculine energies or archetypes in boy psychology. A good example from the book is given by the birth of Jesus. He is seen as a mystery initiated from the divine realm born from the Virgin Mary. The miraculous attends to him by being surrounded by worshippers as he radiates light because he is God, but at the same time completely helpless and vulnerable. This is why the divine child is the immature masculine archetype and energy of the king. Therefore King Herod tries to seek him out and kill Jesus, forcing him to be spirited away to Egypt for protection. As you can see, King Herod is nothing more than the Shadow King Tyrant, and not truly a king at all. This myth of the Divine Child archetype or baby boy at play is represented in many other stories such as the great Persian prophet Zarathustra, and in Judaism where baby Moses, who is delivered to be the great teacher and mediator between God and the people, but being raised as a prince of Egypt, he is threatened by an edict from the Pharaoh, therefore being helpless and being set adrift on the Nile. Not only is this figure represented in myth and scripture, but it is also within ourselves. When something or a creative spark that is fresh and innocent is being born within him, creative elements from the unconscious are being made conscious into awareness, therefore experiencing new life. But this energy is fragile and it needs to be consistently moved before it gets attacked. As I quote from the book, a man may say in his therapy, I may actually be better. And right away he may be answered by an inner voice, oh no you're not, you know you can never be well. It is then time to get the fragile divine child to Egypt. This element of himself needs to grow into something much stronger, but to maintain the element that makes him young at heart. Nevertheless, we seem to be born with the divine child archetype within us. Many different psychologists referred to it in different ways with different interpretations. Freud called it the id, Alfred Adler called it the hidden power drive, as the hidden superior complex that is all powerful and being the centre of the universe, but still completely vulnerable and helpless. And finally, Carl Jung, who called it the self, as it is separate from the ego, and when in contact, produces an enormous sense of well-being, enthusiasm for life, peace and joy. The divine child obviously has its bipolar shadow aspects, and these are what the book calls the high chair tyrant and weakling prince. The weakling prince from the boy to man when possessed appears to have very little personality, no enthusiasm for life and very little initiative. This is the boy that dictates those around him by his whining, complaining helplessness. Everything is too much for him. He never joins in on children games when a child and constantly needs to be carried around on a pillow. The entire family system works around his comfort and the slightest wishes from his parents is his command. Being a frequent hypochondriac sarcastic weakling, he loves to manipulate and play with the emotions of his siblings or peers. Because he has convinced his parents that he is a helpless victim of life. The parents are in constant protection of him. When there is a controversy, he is protected when most of the time he is to blame for the cause of his confrontations with others. The weakling prince is the polar opposite of the high chair tyrant, as when looking at the pyramid structure that is represented in the book, it is at the opposite point of the bottom of the pyramid, mirroring the high chair tyrant position. The pinnacle position, immature masculine energy of the divine child is at the top of the pyramid structure. Because the weakling prince archetype is the polar opposite of the high chair tyrant, he rarely throws the tantrums of the tyrant, but nevertheless occupies a less easily detectable throne. The opposite shadow of the divine child, with comparison to the weakling prince, is the high chair tyrant in the book. This archetype in the book is epitomised by the image of little Lord Fauntleroy, sitting in his high chair, banging his spoon on the tray and screaming for his mother to feed him and attend to his needs. Nothing is good enough for this dark version of the Christ child. Nothing meets his specifications, constantly self-righteous, the high chair tyrant hurts himself with his grandiosity because he rejects the very thing that he needs in life. The main characteristics of this archetype are arrogance, childishness in a negative sense, and irresponsibility. This is what psychologists can call inflation or pathological narcissism. When the individual becomes older and continues this immature masculine energy into the Shadow King, this ruling archetypal force can play great influence on his character. For example, the CEO, promising leader or presidential candidate that shoots himself in the foot and sabotages his efforts. The ancient Greeks always said that hubris is always followed by nemesis. 
the gods will always bring down the arrogant and inflated mortals. For example, given in the book is that of Icarus. Because of his inflation, he believed that he could fly close to the sun, but his wings made of wax and feathers brought him down into the sea with great speed. Even with warning from his father, he still committed to the act. The high chair tyrant who inflicts his human host becomes the perfectionist, tries to exceed more than he knows possible and berates himself. This is why he is never satisfied. He becomes a slave to his own grandiose inner two-year-old, just like his mother when he was young. When this force cannot be brought under control, he becomes a malignant sociopath, being the CEO that rather sees his company fail than deal with his own grandiosity. What the book claims as becoming a miniature Hitler, while without regret seeing their own country fall in the process. This figure often demeans and degrades others who are trying to accomplish something while the shadow divine child sits upon their high chair enjoying their perks of power as they last until the axe falls upon them. If you enjoyed this video please give it a like, comment and subscribe. I will be doing more videos on this book covering the archetypes of the immature masculine and the mature masculine.